I released my first React Native app four years ago, and I've been working on that one and a handful of other ones since then. So I wanted to create this video as just uh, a way to share, you know, my experience using React Native over that time. And it's not necessarily advice, but more just my opinions and experience. So I'm going to cover a few things in this video, but um, there's a lot of things I could have covered that I'm not going to. So if there's any questions you have, just put them down in the comments, and if I can answer them, I'll give it a shot. So the first thing I want to talk about is React Native has a, still has like a pretty steep learning curve. Um, I think it was steeper four years ago because, you know, four years ago, if you wanted to build a full-on production app, you couldn't really use Expo because it was so limited. Uh, you couldn't do in-app purchases. And um, I'm trying to think. There's some other stuff you couldn't do. Um, so you were kind of uh, forced to use React Native command line uh, to start your app. And then that brought in a lot of issues because you had to understand the different build systems, you know, the iOS build system and the Android build system. and and when you hit bugs in each of those build systems, like trying to decipher um, what what what's causing that and how to fix it, and you know it takes, or at least it used to take, you know, three four months um, just just to get familiar with like all the ecosystems that you need to get familiar with. Um, I think es Expo has changed a lot. I, I still don't use it as much just because I'm so used to not using it, but it's improved a ton where I, I think you could build um, a, a, you know, a full production app building X using Expo, and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of examples of that out there. So it's easier to get started um, now than it was four years ago, but there still is a steep learning curve. So if, if you're pretty new to React Native, I, I know it's like it's really frustrating. But once you get comfortable, um, you know, your, your productivity and, and how quickly you can build UIs, you know, increases substantially. You know, and along those lines, upgrading React Native versions has gotten easier. It, it still can be kind of a chore. But I remember a few years ago, I mean, it could take you days to get um, an upgrade working. And I even had one time where I had to just create a whole new app and just copy all my code over to a new app because I couldn't even get the upgrade working. I couldn't even get it to build. And uh, yeah, so it's still a little tough, but, it, but it's much better than it used to be. When it comes to styling a React Native app, uh, there's a variety of different UI libraries that you could use. And I think for the most part, using a UI library is going to end up being more of a hindrance than a help. And, and I'm talking about UI library when it comes to things like buttons and, and, and other um, kind of stylistic things, lists, list items. Um, the real, real, real strength of React Native is how easy it is to build UI elements. So a lot of these UI libraries, they're great for like kickstarting a project, but it, but if you're trying to build a, a specifically styled UI or you're trying to match an existing website, I think eventually you hit like a roadblock. And the fact that it's so easy to build buttons and lists and list items and, and things like that, that it's not necessarily worth it to use a UI library for those things. Now, I think you do need to use a UI library if you're trying to use uh, native components like say you want to use a picker I mean you could build a picker in just JavaScript but but if you want to use an actual native picker for iOS or Android it becomes real hard to do that without using a UI library so in that instance I think it makes sense to use that UI library and make yourself a little wrapper around that um, so you're only using that that the component from that UI library once and then you use your own wrapper throughout your app and that way you can switch out that UI library in the future easily if you need to. Now when it comes to styling though I, I, I really like 
the Shopify restyle library. It's, uh, it makes it really simple to build your own, um, <clears throat> build your own UI library for your app. And you can, you can make variants um, easily in that. So you have, say, a make your own button and then you have a maybe a text button or a button that's just an outline. Um, you can you can use all the same uh, props and stylings that come with React Native, but then you can build your own variants. So you just say you know variant text, and then you have your text button. And uh, I'm not you know a great designer by any stretch of the imagination, but but one thing that I found that makes design good. <coughs> is consistency throughout the whole app. So consistent padding, consistent margin, consistent colors and border radiuses and things like that. And it's real easy in React Native to just, you know, make a different style for every component or screen. So setting everything up through the Shopify restyle library like forces you to define the style and keep using that sa those same styles, and um, you'll really notice a difference in, in in how the app looks when you have consistency throughout the whole thing. One other thing that's tough in React Native is is doing animations. And you know, a, a library that is uh, probably the most popular library is, is React Native Reanimated. And back when I first started using React Native. Reanimated was on version one, and the API was like crazy. You know, I mean, for me, I just couldn't even figure it out. Like, I, there's other people that that did like amazing stuff with it, but it was just too hard for me to figure out. And I tried, and I tried following tutorials and things like that. I could just never get anything working. And, um, you know, if you're work for me working as a solo developer on an app, it's like I had other things I needed to do. I couldn't spend weeks trying to get like a, a single animation working so now it's a little bit easier with the new reanimated api um it's simpler for for <laughs> for simple people like me to be able to build animations but with that said it's still not easy to build like a high quality animation that runs smooth on all platforms and you know on iOS and Android and, and the variety of devices and you can go a long way with just using layout animation that comes with React Native and if you're not familiar with it it's it's basically an easy way to to animate um, when the screen gets like redrawn like for example if you have a list of five items and you delete an item off that list, you can animate that so it you know fades out or, or, or bounces out or, or whatever. And with the layout animation API from React Native, all it is is one line of code. And you just call it before you remove that item and then it's automatically handed for you. Um, it's a really simple way to, to add s some really nice touches to an app. So in my opinion, if you want to take your app to that next level and have nice animations, use the layout animation API and uh, see how far you can get with that before going to the next step. I also want to talk about reasons not to use React Native. Uh, like for example, if you want to make a game. Now if, if you want to make like a game like Wordle, I feel like it would be pretty easy to do in React Native. But if you want to make, you know, some crazy immersive game, and you'd be better off using something else because it's just not the strong suit of React Native. You know, maybe use Unity or something. So another reason I wouldn't use React Native is if I was a new developer and I had never built an app at all and I wanted to build an app for the purpose of making money, I would choose iOS and I would learn Swift. And the reason for that is because people that have iPhones are much more likely to pay for subscriptions than people who have Android phones. You know, as for my apps, iOS beats out Android almost four to one. 
and the people, other people I've talked to, it's the same thing. Um, you know, I don't know why. I mean, you could speculate for many reasons, but the reality is that people that have iPhones are more likely to pay a subscription, and it's hard to build a business around an app unless you charge for subscriptions. So, if I was a new, if I was new to mobile development, and I didn't know how to use React Native, I didn't know how to do anything else, but I wanted to build an app to make money, I would choose iOS, and I would stick to the iOS platform, you know, learn Swift, and build a native app. So that's really all the thoughts I have right now. Um, if you have any questions for me about what it's like to develop in React Native, work, what it's like to work on one app for four years straight, you know, anything else, just post them in the comments, and uh, hopefully I'll have an answer for you.